England, perhaps the underdogs, but looking to square the series and match commentary in Dunedin, comes from Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. Welcome back to Dunedin. The roof on, the atmosphere in. And the England pack rewarded with a repeat selection bar one. Rob Webber, Marler and Wilson, the front row again. England stars of last season, Courtney Laws. Alongside Joe Launchbury, but Jeff Parling's there now, 100% at the line out last week. Tom Ward, he's the change. Rob Shaw and Morgan, then Care, fit again. Farrell, competitive juices running high, no doubt. Billy 12 Trees fit. Luther Burrell, a winning finalist back home. And then the big call for the big man, Manu, on the wing. Marlon Yard swaps flank. Mike Brown, and the back three survivor from seven days ago. And there's the bench. What a bench. Laws, Winnipola, Hartley. Saw there too, Kieran Brooks yet to make his international impact, standing by for a debut. England left Auckland on Thursday. New Zealand have been down here in the chill all week in the South Island, getting the rust cleared off. A first test performance that weirdly lacked basic skills at times. Coach Steve Hansen said if he dropped those who'd had a bad game, then he would have had to have dropped the whole team. Expect a backlash. New Zealand have to get better. They will get better. Last week was one win they took very little satisfaction from. Just the one change, the home pack entirely the same. Woodcock, Franks and Coles, the front row. Ritalik and Whitelock, the locks again. Kieran Reid not quite ready for a comeback aerobically, so Liam Messam, skipper Richie McCaw, Jerome Kaino, 50th cap for him. Cruden and Smith, 9 and 10. Smith, the Highlander, on home turf then. Ma Nonu and another Smith, Conrad. That's week's last gasp hero. Then the change, Julian Savir is back. Israel Dag injured. Corey Jane, like England's yard, swats wings. Ben Smith, like scrum half Aaron, will get a run on Highlander turf. And there's the bench, Patrick Tuipulotu, the one who didn't get on in Auckland and therefore awaits cap number one. Ladies and gentlemen, for the singing of God Save the Queen and the New Zealand National Anthem. To sing God Save the Queen, Rebecca Nelson. to sing the national anthem of New Zealand, Lizzie Marbley.
the All Blacks see themselves as the White Knights of Test Match Rugby, beating everyone with the brilliance of their running game. Never mind the fact they kick more than most teams. Never mind that this is one of the most ambitious England teams since 2003. England are cast as the heavies here to slow down the All Blacks. New Zealand respect England. By full time, England hope they will fear them. The Harker last week failed to get New Zealand going. Zealand team failed to get the Auckland crowd going. You sense in this stadium fast becoming known as New Zealand rugby's atmospheric capital. It could be a wholly different story. That was proper. So was that England's great chance last week? Well, this England side for the second test does not think so. You keep hearing if England can just get one win on this tour, then that will be a real achievement. But they want more than that. Jaco Paper is the referee. Nigel Owens was a controversial figure last week. England certainly not helped by some key decisions. But not bleating, just 100% head down to try and locate what would be There's a countdown on the just a field. third win so just by like an English rugby team There's in this country okay. in a test match against New Zealand. Do New Zealand go for the flat kickoff? It was brilliantly executed by Cruden, giving England no time to lift the jumper. Fascinating start, Kenny. Both sides looking to raise it. And maybe the roof as well. In our first line-out of the match, England 100% at the line-out. In the first test, Rob Webber, such a key part of that, the hooker. Tom Ward back in the side. The Northampton man into such an excellent finish to his season. Excellent start from Parling. Jumping across the line out. And side. the penalty as well. New Zealand encouraged into that as they try and Jumping put a marker across. down against this English line out and fail. Well, it's a perfect start for Jeff Parley on his way back to fighting with Courtney Laws for the middle jumper position. He ran the line out brilliantly in attack and defence. And what confidence, Weber, who had a storming start for England, goes straight to the back for Parling. It's forced down and Farrell gets a good first touch there. Now England will look to drive these line outs, I'm sure, and balance the game. Weber Parling again, this time Parling at the front. And Marla. England get a little bit detached, they'll need to regroup and do. It's another penalty. Danny Kerr wants it. The ball, but mainly that, the penalty. Good thinking from England. First line out to the back for Parlin. New Zealand collapse. The next time they go to the front and they drive it, and McCaw and company penalise. Thoring would mix it up 
they will use their backs. They'll try and get men like Tuolangi and Burrell over the game line, but they will also have this drive-in play going. It caused problems last week. It's caused problems in the first minute or so. Now, Freddie Burns, who kicked everything and struck the ball beautifully, is on the bench today, but Owen Farrell, whose country form has always risen above that of his club, is charged with the duty of taking every chance that comes the way of England. Fell in love with this stadium. At the last World Cup, England-Argentina wasn't much of a game, but it was one heck of a noise. But at the World Cup here, you'll probably remember all kinds of problems for the kickers, no matter how illustrious those names were. But Owen Farrell, in practice yesterday, couldn't miss. Now, at the start of the match, can he take that form into the game? Yes, he most certainly can. Never wavered. Nor does he. About five to seven, I was behind the post where England were warming up, and Justin Marshall just turned to me and said, gee, does that bloke ever miss? He didn't in practice today either. It wasn't just yesterday. Lovely rhythm early on. Restart from Cruden then. Parling's there again. Stuart Lancaster saying in the week how we saw the true competitor in Parling. Oh, look at this, another penalty. The true lion that he became last year. And the referee. There's a penalty penalty from the side. Three at the line, more line out. Next one's Ben. He's starting to get right on the edge here and lose his patience. Well, I must say, Jacko Piper refereed a game in Wellington when New Zealand beat Australia, and I felt Australia got absolutely nothing that day. But we're three minutes into the game, and the quality and the control and the power of the England lineup has already won the team not just three points, but a final warning for Richie McCaw in terms of a yellow card next infringement. Great start for England's set piece. And early worries then for Hanson and team. Another two Ben Morgan this time. Two men who retain their places. Of many, maybe unanimously, people will say, rightly so. There goes Kat. First chance to look at the big England centre pairing. Burrell there and 12 trees alongside. Coming in for Eastman and Tuilangi, although Tuilangi remains on the pitch. There is 12 trees, one of his trademark little dink kicks. Burrell's got a foot on it as well. And Ben Smith, first time that he started for New Zealand at fullback. Of course, a regular in that position with the Highlanders. Aaron Smith, Aaron Cruden, England still got a chance to put the squeeze on. Well, the foundations are very good, Danny Kerr peeled off that line out and Luther Burrell was straight over Aaron Cruden there and England won the game line. Twelve trees then came round right to left, looked for a little kick into the corner, it wasn't his best but it's good early pressure from England. The other thing you notice that when you look wide on the pitch in terms of England's defensive line, Yard and Tuolangi are in the line, and it's Farrell and Brown who are patrolling the area. So the whole talk about Tuolangi is going to be tested all the time. He's often in the defensive line, not back. Weber to the tail, and Whitelock got a hand in this time. And then it was McCaw who came round. Charged down by Launchbury, and he's got the ball back. Looks for the ball inside. It's taken by Tom Wood. On to Weber. Weber trying to scramble over, must put that back to Kerr and does. The men were the other way, Rob Shaw on his own. Now this is where England have to be clinical, they know that. When these chances present themselves, Weber was just short, but here's Burrell. 12 trees to yard, didn't go forward, but New Zealand have regrouped. Here's Farrell to 12 trees, and there's a chance right now, Burrell. Rob Shaw again, Parling needs to show immense strength. Doesn't want to get caught for holding on, doesn't. Good work from McCaw, counter up very good. 
call from the referee. Can have the very. And New Zealand survived. What a chance it was. Nonu. Well, England will be disappointed there. They had a couple of short sides where it was really on. They had the wrong man in the right position and they couldn't take the chance. And in the end, Richie McCaw, magnificent there. It all starts from Joe Launchbury charging it down. Ironically, it started from England losing the line out. They looked two or three times as if they were about to score. But as happened last week, the chance wasn't taken. But New Zealand on the rack. But England have to start taking these chances. I'm sure we'll take that time. Keep driving this one. Told to use it though by the referee. Here's Marlon Yard off that wing. And he is going to make it. First try of the series for England. They have arrived, beefed up, and raring to go. Well, Richie McCaw, they're looking, they're checking this. It is being checked. Nigel Owens involved again. That's a try. Yeah. There's no doubt. Just saying, McCaw saved New Zealand's skin a minute or so earlier with a brilliant counter run, but it was the great man himself, Marlon Yard, straight through Richie McCaw, of all people, bust the all black captain tackle. Number seven, keep your eye on him. Just through that left shoulder as if McCaw isn't there. Second bounce, and he is over. And Burrell, who's carried well to start, is alongside him. McCaw shrugged off by Yard. What a start for England. And now the missed chance. If that what it is what it was, doesn't matter anymore. Because straight away England got their try, stayed down there. Farrell has an easy conversion. There is plenty of muscle in this England back line, and it's going to come at New Zealand from every angle if England can get the ball, and so far, the pack are certainly providing it. And Danny Kerr is fizzing, coming laterally off the base of the scrum, asking questions around the fringe. Through to restarting again, taken by try scorer Yard, his third try for his country in just his fourth international. Work in progress internationally, maybe. But he looked the part there. And there on the follow-up, that came forward off yard. Rob Shaw. Just the knock-off. Better than last week, though, where there were some decent kicks from Ben Youngs and the chasing just wasn't of the standard. Yard got there, and it was a very good kick from Danny Kerr. It's a most assured start from the Harlequins half. Here's what I'm talking about, those little snipes. See how he's just holding Richie McCaw's interest there? And I think that split second, McCaw looking left to right, puts him slightly off balance. He still should make the tackle, but Kerr's the man who just creates the doubt, and that's all Yard needed. The referee blocked Kaino, didn't he? Decisions going against England early on last week. Referee helping in a different way that time. Helping the England side. Well, that's good footwork from Ben Smith. And those tries in the Rugby Championship last season. On the wing, he's played centre as well. Coming in from full-back today. There's Conrad Smith to Aaron Smith. With a roll around from Franks to find Nonu, who rolls out of the tackle. That's brilliant for Mar Nonu. 12 trees gets back, Brown put his body on the line there. In go New Zealand quickly, Cruden out wide. What a start to this test match as the All Blacks come right back. Kaino, remember his 50th cap. And wants that to be a winning, memorable occasion. White lock to Smith, here's Cruden, Nonu, who really got it going. Spinning his way through the England midfield. Conrad Smith again, good hands from Salvia. Oh, here's Ben Smith. England trying to hang on. Couldn't Aaron Smith. This is the pace that New Zealand wanted to play at last week. And they're finding it pretty early on. It'll ship pass there from Corey Jane. McCaw doesn't get a chance to ship it on. 
Rotalic. And as close as that, it's a relentless attack. Aaron Smith, Cruden, flapped on. Does that create a, the error? No, it doesn't. It just allows Kaino to come back at England. Being held up by Rob Shaw and Farrell. Outside. But advantage was being played. Nonu spinning through. England a little bit vulnerable in the midfield there. Both Le Luther Burrell was cut through on the inside and then 12 trees on the other side. There's two offsides, the second one. He's not going quickly, Aaron Cruden, is he? England alert this time. The interest in that Nonu break, I thought for a second that Franks seemed to play a bit of a shepherding role. Ben Smith as well, he's a man causing problems. Inside Burrell there, and then he goes to the other side and he's causing big trouble. Now there I thought Franks took out David Wilson. But, you know, there was a question mark about the try as well, so they balanced themselves out. But England, I just think the line speed needs to be a little bit sharper, a little bit quicker. You can't give New Zealand's midfield and Smith quite that room. Clear warning from New Zealand. England better heed it. Cruden, as you say, no quick tap this time. That was a call from Barrett, wasn't it, last week? Talking to Owen Farrell about it this week. Owen Farrell said that he could see it coming because he watches Super Rugby so much, and Cruden does that kind of thing week in, week out, but he's prepared to go. But Farrell said he would not have done it himself. The more conventional posts would have been his route. What a kick and chase that was. And Tuilangi announces his presence in the match. He's not come to his flank yet. Mike Brown. And the core was there with Conrad Smith. Really get much more experience than those two, could you? Twelve trees. Oh, he saw the space there. Great running from twelve trees. Where's the support? Wood left it. It's not gone forward. Here's Rob Shaw. And Parling managed to avoid getting a fingertip to it. Launch brick. Saying that England were caught in midfield. Well, New Zealand too, and twelve trees saw exactly what was on Danny Kerr it really was out the back too far backwards and 12 trees to yard yard again looks to show that power both sides said they wanted to play at pace they are living up to those assertions how long can they keep it up there's Morgan Farrell Brown Weber time the whistle does go it's gone forward England's attacking shape working very well they're sending the big runners up on the front line and Billy 12 trees just coming around behind and then the step New Zealand being stretched mess them on the inside none who can't get their really good run but again just not quite the key pass at the key moment there but really promising from England here's the forward pass and you can see it's just offloaded left hand Mike Brown Straight into the midriff of Rob Webber. Yes. Okay. The call down. Yeah. Can I get a little bit of Webber as yes, Conrad sorry. Smith yeah. asked for and receives the forward pass. Does McCaw take the bang here, taking down the big bath hooker? Strong carrier, Rob Webber. Picked a good line. Call Sean up. Fitzpatrick and Colin Meads. Play more all black games than that man, Richie McCourt, taking into account tour fixtures as well as test matches. And he has been amazingly durable, considering what he's put himself through. I just sense today, I, I, I think England will try and get after Richie McCaw, magnificent player, we've seen that turnover, but we've also seen the floor side with Yard busting through him, and I think Wood and company are just going to really try and stamp all over him if they get the platform up front. Smith and Cruden, cross-field kick, this will test Yard. It will also test Corey Jane, too much so. 
the last week, twice in the first ten minutes, New Zealand went an orthodox passing route and they got outside... Oh, they're gone. No, they haven't. They got outside yard once and it happened on his England debut as well. England do defend narrow and people like Josh Cromfeld have been imploring New Zealand to get wide and attack England there. And this time they went for the cross-field kick, but they definitely see England between the 15-metre line and the touch line as vulnerable. Interesting there, England were looking for the quick throw-in. In that slower walk. Care to Burrell. 12 trees. Not quite clean enough yet, but the ambition is there. Conrad Smith scrapping for everything, such an intelligent player. His hand all over that intervention there. You could see once again England possibly making one or two more hand in errors than they'd like. They're 10-3 up, but in key moments they're just trying to hurry the pass away and just instead of thinking slowly and just moving that ball. Just about identical when it comes to the scales, the two packs. When it comes to the official weights, my husband. Forwards are less likely to tell a fib on the backs. Smith, Cruden, to Alangi. Smoker bounce by Brown. That is a brilliant take from Brown. Didn't get it first time, but somehow at speed. We're certainly holding on, though. Very interesting no tactically. Tackle. After release of the man on his feet. First time that Aaron Cruden has said, well, let's just have a little dink behind Manu Tuolangi, see what he's up to. Ball bounced away from him, it was brilliant from Brown. Cruden, looking for the percentage, three points. He's also looking for the extra metre, and as we watch this, Jaco Peter, the referee, has just rolled the ball back to where he wanted it, Mike Brown did not want that as the outcome. Superb play from Sam Whitelock. Big, gangly, second row, typical wiry New Zealander. But it's the speed he got down onto the floor that was so impressive that isolated Brown. One of the four Crusader brothers. I think we'll move on to play the Crusaders in Christchurch on Tuesday. How good will the squad feel if they go there at one all? How alive the series will feel. Long way to go yet. Cruden again. And well wide. Distance was not the issue. And England not hurrying the 22 restart. You would imagine Farrell 10 metres back to make sure there's no charge down. Will go long. He's given his forwards a chance, great height on that. And also Yard. He's trying to find a way through the all-black bodies. Yeah. Nono to Whitelock. Aaron Smith. Aaron Cruden. It's Conrad Smith. He's saying great reader of the game, and didn't we see that right at the end last week? Calling the snake when he slinked off to that corner for the winning try. England in there again, Rob Shaw, referee spinning now. Great work at the breakdown from England. And that has been well judged, according to Nigel Owens, that kick too. What a power-packed tackle that was from Jeff Parr, and he's more than a line-out forward. Now the England fans making their voices heard, the judge to have hit the line, but that's a brilliant tackle from Parling. I felt sure that Nigel Owens was giving it the nod and running down the line. Didn't see the tackle, it was fantastic. Do we see this hit the line? I think we do. Very tight. Taken by Retallick. And it really changed the momentum last week with that run and ultimately the scoreboard. Well, that's a good line from Salvaire, but the whistle has gone. But there, in a flash, 
Obstruction 12 black taking the man we out. We can all see the threat again of Julian Sarvea. Was obstruction by Nonu. Who walks past the referee. So it's just that Chris Robshaw that Sarvea just ran over. Sorry. And I don't think Robshaw missed the tackle because of Nonu. His timing is, is brilliant. He, He's been a thorn in England's side with four tries the last two times they played against him. He's brilliant against the box. Nonu just steps in there and he takes Farrell out and Farrell very cleverly goes down just to make sure Piper doesn't miss it. But Rob Shaw, there's no reason for him missing that other than the fact Sevilla is one hell of a winger and a specimen. To be fair, he'd do well not to go down. Nonu pretty blatant there. You do see players now, they're making sure, don't you, when they go down. It's not the old days of bouncing back, it's down and a scream and a bit of pain. And ref, did you see that? Big kick. In the context of the game and its distance, although in Farrell's favour, it's fairly central. A little angle on it for him. It's a dream surface as well for a kicker. A lovely surface. but it's not what Farrell or England wanted. So that's one miss by him, one miss by Cruden. Stays at England 10, New Zealand 3. Parling to rise again, imperious. Kerr, Farrell, 12 trees, rejects the longish ball to Burrell, Kerr again, there is Burrell, tackle there from Nodu, nothing illegal about that one, Kerr, Rob Shaw, and then Skipper finds his club mate, it's Joe Marler, Kerr again, and they're being patient here, Farrell, and Weber and Parling and Tuilangi. Into Sarvia. Tuilangi was stopped in his tracks, wasn't he? Rob Shaw, caught by Coles, but cleared out well there. Wilson and Launchbury. Now, has Kerr judged this one right? No. And no debate about that one. That's all 60 metres of territory and two prime pieces of pressure have been wasted there by those kicks. Danny Kerr puts his right hand up, he acknowledges that is a poor mistake. The kind of moments that will infuriate the coaches. Nine times out of ten, Kerr gets that. Vitalik, Smith and Cruden, Nonu, testing out the Farrell shoulder that time. The work by 12 trees, but he was very much on the back foot there, and England might be here to yard. Steps in on Jay. Both of them swapping wings to do battle again. Aaron Smith, such a quick-witted player, quick-witted speaker, actually, as well. It's been juggled around, and it will be an England pit in. England defending much better on the short side there, allowing New Zealand to go wide and then getting the numbers out there very well. It goes forward off Corey Jane. There you can see just off his right arm and it rolls offside, but not deliberately so, into another all black hand. Farrell, the latest of several midfield players who have been shrugged off with some ease by some very powerful running midfielders. Woodcock Wilson, the loose head, tight head battle. Tony Woodcock, 109 test matches now. Come closer without being engaged. David Wilson at the 36. And desperate to grab that role. The absence of Dan Cole, Manu Tuilangi. 
hovers and waits with minutes. He's come very wide, Miles, and Sevilla is not in the remotest bit interested. There's 35 metres between Sevilla and the top time, and that's where Tuolani is prowling. Woodcock feeling the heat there, but to his credit, not shifting. His 12 trees running onto it, Yard off the wing, Yard trying to go through. It's a chop tackle from Smith, it needed to be from Conrad Smith there, from a New Zealand perspective. Mike Brown again. It's Farrell and Morgan. A bit on his own, but he stands up well. Now, can he get the ball back quickly? He can. Farrell, ricochet. Burrell to Ilangi. First chance to have a go. Even resetting his launch spring. That's the halfway line. Up and under from Farrell. 12 trees, he's going to try and get there first. He's going to time it right. Corey Jane, so good underneath the high ball, and so good when there's a little bit of space. Here's Ben Smith, he didn't release. And that was very clever play again from the New Zealand fullback. It's good play from Jane, and now Jane, the pass on to Messon and Cruden. Ball inside. Care. There's a nuisance there for the All Blacks. Through the legs from Farrell. Body's over. Mike Brown needs to make this count now. Advantage well and truly over. Ben Smith again, oh dear, slipped. Knows the surface better than anybody. Just slipped a little bit there. Could have been a slightly better That's kick nice. initially from Mike Brown. England had a, a lot of space over there. They want their kicking game to be a little bit sharper than it is. So much of their game is good. Left foot goes from under him. Tulangi did very well, you know, from that attack when Marlon Yard got tap tackled by Conrad Smith. He just held his width and that all he had to do to just hold New Zealanders, and it just opens up the threat from the other flank. New Zealand hoping that Tui Lang in those situations shows his machismo and then gets a little bit isolated, but as you say, Tui Lang doing the right thing. Hardly played on the wing, really, just four times in Leicester colours. Played there growing up in age grade rugby. Lack of control there from England at the base of that rolling moor. It's another highly frustrating mistake in a very good position and things were building nicely in complete control there and you wondered if there was going to be a penalty it was going to be new zealand collapsing it and perhaps even the yellow card for the fourth offense from the lineup but instead the sink between care and his forwards not quite right and that's a, it's a soft penalty after a very good drive from england it's just weber and care Hooker and the number nine just colliding. Ball slides to the ground and then the offside. Holes with the throw. But for his tackles in Super Rugby this season, only Stephen Moore now injured, of course. As a hooker has recorded more, much more in evidence around the park, Dan Coles. And he added the weight to his frame. At the time it was just a simple throw to get things moving. And now, Aaron Smith has caught the scrum half disease that Kerr obviously passed on to him. Yard with the kick, set up nicely for Ben Smith, didn't really have to break his stride, and he gave him every chance to run it back. Savir, he needs no second invitation to do exactly the same. Nonu. Some space there, Rob Shaw's going to put his head down here because an awkward bounce might make England hurry. Farrell's got himself back. And got the ball away. Yes. Now, will New Zealand go quickly? No, good chase from Farrell. His kick, his chase. Well, not all of England's kicking out of hand has been great, but that was superb from Farrell. It's a very clever kick from Marnono, straight down the line, and Farrell was quick and he was alert and under pressure. That was a good touch find. Yard trying the uh, resultant conversion, separating the two sides. Stolen by England and their captain. 
and here's 12 trees. Well, Conrad Smith, if he stayed, there might have been an interception for him. As it is, it fell for Jane, and then he boots it out. Well, both sides nearly being caught on the break there. Well, Jacko Paper's saying it's not a knock-on because Conrad Smith wasn't looking and it was off his back. New Zealand's line-out is starting to function quite well until Rob Shaw decides to go and pick it up, but they're getting a drive going, and there you can see Conrad Smith, he's on a passive fade trying to take out Luther Burrell. It hits him. Well, Conrad Smith reads the game as well as anybody. When he reacts like that, you know it was very much on. Interesting as well with Conrad Smith fading as we're seeing there, turning his turning his face away from the passing man. You wonder, can England find someone to pick an angle infield? Because there's a little gap there. New Zealand are drifting very much. England with a large slice of the uh, territory and uh, shading the possession as well. And that's probably about the fair reflection on the scoreboard, isn't it? Seven points up. Possession, of course, important. I think territory is so vital. Huh? That's the stat I'd like to see from our New Zealand host, the territory at the moment. Jeff Parling, what a start he's made to this game. Crowd getting restless again with England a little bit slow to the line out, but it was after an injury break. Anyway, they'll be happy now. Not straight. Couple of lineouts gone awry in the first 30 minutes. It's been some good ones. It's a dangerous weapon. They've been driving New Zealand. But I think the Blacks have just found their way back into this game. Their own lineout has been quite competent. They've tried to drive England once or twice. And their scrum looks a little bit stronger at the half hour stage than it was in Auckland last week. As we said last week, these are all black minutes, aren't they? As we approach an interval or the end of a game, so they'll often find their very best at this stage of a half. Aaron Smith to Cruden, Nono the decoy that time. Then Corey Jane, all at sea on the left wing, not today on the right. It's a big turnover ball and it's Yard who goes long. Tom Wood going with him. Plenty of white shirts there in front. Of the All Black counter and Ben Smith. Oh, Mike Brown collides with Smith there and he is hurt. The game is going on and Brown down and out of position. Referee will have a little glance at that now as he passes him. Here's Yard. He needs to get this off. Brown is back with us, and he needs to be, because Savir is looking for him, he's seen off yard to show all black muscle this time. There's Corey Jane finding himself in the fly half position. He's keeping one eye on Brown, he's trying to get his bearings. Moving crossfield now, is that is where the ball is heading. There's Cruden buried by Marla. Up to England again very quickly. Burrell with the tackle. Boot in from Weber. Whitelock. I think Brown's OK now. Here's Smith. New Zealand still looking to test it. Mike Brown is going to be involved. All oh, the ball takes a horrible bounce. Two Ilangi was putting that in one hand. Back from Morgan to Yard, England. Carelessly, some would say. Adventurously, others might. Bring it away. But it's coming straight back. And Ben Smith, this phase of the play, refuses to die here. England's kicking is asking for trouble. They should have got this ball off this park ages ago. Yard had the chance twice. But it doesn't matter for England because that's a knock on. And they survive that repeated raiding from. The hosts. But you can't keep kicking ball to Ben Smith and Julian Surveyor and not be punished. Yard put on his backside there after a really poor kick. He should have dropped 20 metres off the distance and found touch. 
That sort of was his punishment, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I would like to see the Brown incident again. I thought that was touch and go. There's McCall losing the ball and the knock-on. Well, the Ben Smith ran into him deliberately. Oh, I, I think he's very close. It's, it, too far? It's worth a second sighting, but if the officials are going to say we're just going to keep playing, that's fine, and let's just have consistency throughout the game. It was, you know, like I said before, maybe Brown milked it, but Ben Smith, he looked as if he knew where he was going, and he didn't just stop dead and say, you have to run around me. Anyway, England, they've got to get... Just think, they're playing with real ambition and pace and confidence, but they've just got to get the accuracy on their kick game better for the chasers to have a chance. A spot of bother at the scrum, Ben Morgan wasn't experiencing that last week on many occasions. He was also brilliant off the base then, pretty good there. Weber. Oh, taken by Tom Wood, and then it's Mike Brown. Support comes from 12 trees. England somehow hanging on to that ball again, but Nono had tracked it. And New Zealand come back now. Franks on to Ben Smith. Where's he going? Running into the clutches of Mike Brown is the answer. What a fast game this is. Inside the final five minutes now, this frantic first period. Retallic. Smith, Nonu. This should be two Ilangis now. It's going to be looking to take them on because that is Manu to Ilangi and it's Conrad Smith who absorbs the man. Farrell. And for Marlin Yard again in 12 trees, two. Slap back. It's going to fall for Weber, but he's very much that was back of white. No, on his own for a moment there. Denny Kerr steps in, but he can't get out from that. And Aaron Smith is very quick just like his opposite number, and then it was Messam, and now it's hands on the inside from Coles, but it doesn't work, and England looking to counter, maybe. Farrell stopped for a moment, but got himself going again. Gives it to Webber, it's both sides playing here. Wilson with the kick, it's all happening out there. And eventually the ball off the park, and everybody can breathe again. Well, there are errors, but there's huge excitement. Both teams finding it fairly easy to get through the first line of the opposition, but can't hold on to the ball in the key moment. With the speed of this game, the bench is going to be so important in the last 20 minutes. England certainly backing theirs today. New Zealand looking for something before half-time to give themselves the lift, the crowd the lift. Penalty coming their way. Carling cleared out. Number 12 still there. He's not right there. First infringement, number 12, get, the, get away. Rob Shaw, not as convinced as the referee. Push that argument as far as he dare. Cruden. It's noticeable that um, Owen Farrell clearly under instructions, while a lot of players are messing around a bit and trying some incredibly fancy things, on his own 10-metre line, when that ball is not quick, it is going up in the air. That high ball was a very good one that broke free, but New Zealand, as we approach half-time, very good attacking position. Retallic, short side is Smith. And then Dane Coles, but no joy. Woodcock tries. Pick up from Kaino. A monster at the end of the game last week. It's got stronger and stronger. Back from Japan. Back in the all black side. And again. Out to Cruden. Nonu. Nonu still. Ben Morgan trying to do a Nonu spin. This time in the tackle. And taking the other way. But New Zealand. Still have it. Boots flying in, hands flying in, but the referee waves it on. It was Tom Wood on the last occasion. Terrific of commitment from Wood. Here's Whitelock. Can England hold out until half time? It could be vital in the context of the whole of the game. This little spell here. Little spell in time. Giant 
in proportions to the game. Some giant men out there clattering into each other. In goes Wilson. Cruden, one of the smallest, if not the smallest, on the park, and Corey James drops it. And Tuilangi's Lange's picked it up, and he should go here. Tui Lange's got Mike Brown with him. Across comes Ben Smith, Tui Lange needs to see him off with a big handoff. Good tackle by Ben Smith. Brilliant from the fullback. You'd have backed Tui Lange there, not just the pace, but also the power of the handoff. New Zealand have it again in the half that refuses to end. Nobody really wants it to. Kicked away. And it's bouncing back in field. And it's care. It's not that on, I think. Yes, referee gives it as nothing emerges. What oh. drama here at the Just end. And what an opening for Manu Tuilangi. And what a half. England have the narrow points advantage. They have the belief they can win. And importantly, they have the bench. But New Zealand are showing that it is going to be an almighty 40 minutes before they do that. Ben Smith was brilliant in front of his home crowd there. Tuilangi wanted him to come high. He wanted to fend him. But Ben Smith was quite brilliant there. He waited, he made the tackle, he's on his feet. Try saving defence there. I don't know where you had the odds there, to Ilangi or Smith, but it was Smith who won it, hands down, as to Ilangi could not find the hand off. Now England simply must make sure that nothing comes of this final scrum. Same ball. Repeat scrum. No, no, same, same Chris Robs, you're saying, will that do so? He has to be careful, there is a fine line between being in the ear of a referee, being influential and starting to irritate him. But this scrum, as an entity, must complete. Nice try from the England captain, but I think the referee wouldn't know that one. It's a little far-fetched. Jeez, those lungs Fine. must be burning out. Uh, there have been mistakes, there have been errors, but there has been endless, breathless end-to-end -end rugby. And it's a penalty to New Zealand. It won't tip the balance on the scoreboard, it won't take New Zealand even level, but psychologically, this will be massive for them. Sure. When you think what could have happened on Tui Lange, England could have been going yeah. down the tunnel with 17 points to their name and just three to the All Blacks. Now, talking about a big swing if this is 10-6. Yeah, ifs and buts. I mean, the bottom line is Ben Smith defensively was better than Tua Lange was in attack, and that's why there's absolute credit there, and New Zealand have eked out a penalty there, Jacko Piper. And this is important, if it's 10-3, England have the tiniest cushion of a converted try and they're still level. If it's 10-6, New Zealand, with one of those brilliant tries, are in the lead. Big kick to end what has been a compelling first 40 minutes. Aaron Cruden, under pressure from Bowden Barrett, no doubt about that. So competitive is the spot for New Zealand at 10. There's three points. Bit of a swing then, but at the moment, the series is standing one all. Can England hold it? 40 minutes away, half-time, England 10, New Zealand 6. Winning New Zealand is a different kettle of fish altogether to winning at Twickenham, where the crowd lifts them. If England win this one, this is the launch pad to the World Cup. If they win this one and they win in Hamilton and take the series, I think they've struck a mortal blow against the All Blacks. It's that important. What a second half we have in store. Begun by the boot of Owen Farrell. No changes made by either side at half-time. No change from Whitelock either there with that... ...standout catch, and also from his captain, McCaw. He would not like the rerun of the Marlon Yard try. Fair to say he's got a bit in the bank. Mm. And that not the best kick, which nearly gave a chance to Tua Lange, who had that chance on the stroke of half-time. Smith 
losing his bearings there. Well, those who watch Super Rugby week in, week out will see this man just drop it on a sixpence at this ground. A Highlanders player, a world-class scrum half and a brilliant kicker of the ball. A little wry grin there, that was a horror. Down from Wood, again another good throw from Weber. Farrell to Tuilangi, now he will look to get him involved in midfield. Always the slight danger of having him on the wing, taking him away from the centre areas. Weber good carry. Care. Farrell. That's better as an England kick. Wasted one or two chances with their kicking in the first half. Sarveas dumped on the floor by Farrell. Is that a tackle or a shoulder? Well, it's certainly debatable. And the reaction of the crowd. Not some of them thought it was illegal. Here's Morgan. Oh, he's isolated here. He needs to show his strength here. Remember, Billy Vunapola on the bench, Courtney Laws, Dylan Hartman, big names, big men. Davey Wilson. Mara and Wilson being expected to do a lot with their experience in this series. Good hands here from England. Luther Burrell travelling at pace, Tui Lange with him, yard, so both wingers cross at the breakdown now. Farrell, Weber, Tom Wood. And Wilson's got a chance to get going here, took it deep. In comes Morgan, saw that it was on. Rob Short, Good off nice lunch. hands again from him. Marla was the recipient now. It is 12 trees inside, and Wood had to resort to trying to use the boot. Just when England needed one more good pass. And New Zealand going now with Coles, finding Cruden, Cruden with a dummy. Morgan couldn't do much about it. Out it goes to Savir. Savir, man inside, is Smith, and Smith saved his team before half-time. Now he scores for them on the other side of the interval. Ben Smith, Dunedin Ball, the Highlander. And the first score of the second half. New Zealand into the lead. The Billy 12 trees tried to offload a ball that was never on, and it's happened too often in the first half. We've said how brave it is, how exciting it is to see England taking New Zealand on, but you don't try passes that just aren't on. And then, from the turnover, I could see it immediately. England was so narrow, they've got forwards exposed. Cruden with the dummy, England are in trouble then. Severe, he could probably score it himself, but he just does the unselfish thing and puts his full-back under the post. It was one pass too many, one offload too many, and England were just outflanked on the counter. Classic New Zealand score. And now England have to come back at New Zealand. But New Zealand came back at them at Twickenham last year. Ben Smith glides across the ground. That is international try number 14 for him. He got those eight in the rugby championship. Very little, as you say, that Morgan can do there. And as you also say, Savia could have scored that himself. Unselfish. Well, Savia is such a fine player because he scores tries, but he doesn't have to make sure that they are taken. He's a really good team player. New Zealand will feel a lot happier now. Mike Brown. Tony Woodcock. Good work, Dylan! Money from Conrad Smith, or that's poor from Cruden. Falls for Marlon Yard. Cruden still telling himself off. Didn't really... Didn't need it, did he? No, need to do it. And it's given. There's the knock-on, it was clearly that. Well, it was flash, but it was futile. He didn't have a great deal of pressure on him. But he made a lovely line, didn't he? He sold the dummy and he just drew the men and he made sure that with Sevier and Smith they were going to score the try. There is the dummy, lovely glide and change of pace. And the wind thinks, one-on-one, -on -one, I'll back myself, but hey, Ben Smith's inside, let's guarantee it. They would have been very disappointed not to score, but those occasions you just know that New Zealand will finish. And you know the difference, Miles.
we wouldn't know at the moment you wouldn't know that England would finish and too often England don't that's the difference the difference between New Zealand and so many others not just England but yeah we're talking about the very highest level here that's where England are trying to operate now with that World Cup on home soil looming larger day by day it's a penalty for Rob Shaw's men that's exactly what the doctor ordered a chance to level things up Owen Farrell missed one in the first half tough one but he knows how important this one is five meters further back the one he missed in the first half surface is good it's fairly central he's a big match player England they leaked one from the scrum at the end of the first half they've given Farrell a chance to get one back Dylan Hartley is stripping off on the far side Rob Webber really put it in last week and this and has added his name right into the mix but Hartley ready to come on to play his part now said this week that he felt Webber was in pole position in view of what he'd done in that first test for the first time that New Zealand ball Hartley would have played against New Zealand in New Zealand he's the Wigan boy Farrell for England and Farrell for points. The whole level. Harley now just has to control the adrenaline. I think it's a really good call that Stuart Lancaster's got him in with half an hour to go. He will be burst into play. And I don't think it'll be too long until we see possibly Billy Vunapola come on as well and maybe Courtney Laws. England has a bench that they think can live with the very best. They're up against the best. They're up against the world champions. And now the cards are starting to be played. His yard. Ben Smith and time here. A little chip from Savia, no sign of his knee injury that kept him out the first test. That was a knock-on. England counter-attack on the advantage. Oh, there's not much advantage now, is there? Jeff Parling gets caught, launch spree, through come New Zealand, if they win a penalty here. New England would love to go back for the knock-on, it was one of those that was played by England, but they didn't really have the numbers. He didn't change. Chased by Yard, up comes Ben Smith, he can do no wrong here. Enjoying his time at full-back. Aaron Smith, lovely step away from Wilson, there could be an overlap situation here. Oh, good step in by Farrell. Crunches the scrum half. We had a man outside Messam. Now it's Whitelock. Kaino in midfield. England do not want to concede another now. Through the middle they go. Now can they get some bodies on it? Turn yes, over. they can. In goes Retallick though. He's stolen it back. He was through the middle too. And the referees allowed that to go on a couple of occasions today. What's that contest? Here's Woodcock. Now Messam might have a chance down in this corner listen to the crowd here the roof keeping in the noise great hands from Franks on to Whitelock Aaron Smith again spins it out to Corey Jane it's going wide for Nonu that normally means problems it normally means damage he got it out somehow to Kaino Asav here is in try he was unselfish just minutes ago that time he can take the plaudits. And New Zealand just know how to push the buttons in those situations. It's instinctive and it's beautiful to watch. Well, they've picked up the pace, haven't they? And they're so powerful. It's Aaron Smith makes the burst. He gets a mismatch against David Wilson and he's straight through him. And this is where England are struggling thereafter. Halfbacks do well. Danny Kerr stays on the wing to make sure the pass don't go. Farrell makes a definitive hit, but that's 30 metres beyond the gain line. And whereas England don't take these chances, at the moment the difference between the best and the aspiring is New Zealand do. Super play from Nonu there. Offload there from Kano and Sevilla. He's never going to miss that. Just draws Burrell, gets beyond the gain line. Clever one-handed ball. The number eight steps and goes. That's made to look very easy, but it wasn't. It's another perfect example of when it threatens to break down, come to nothing, New Zealand find a way out of the situation to their benefit. And once again, Julian Savier 
scores against England. A couple of braces. There's two tests against England before today. Aaron Cruden, well, it's not all going well for him, and maybe he knew that his time was up. Roden Barrett comes on and he joins a team in the driving seat at the moment. Familiar misery for England, it was Nonu and Surveyor who quelled England's fight back at Twickenham and they've done a number yet again, but England well in this game and that will help. Sure, Surveyor still can't stop scoring against England, we go live now with Kaino though, trying to bring it away. Barrett, here's Smith and Messam and Corey Jane and that's surely forward, not given. Barrett and New Zealand throwing everything at England here. Nonu, Retallick, Morgan risked everything there to try and stop it somehow. Marla has to step away. 18 13, New Zealand lead, but it feels like a bigger lead now. They're bossing the game, and England must try and keep it. It's Hartley, the new man. Smith, Barrett. Ben Smith stepping from two there. Conrad Smith, they're doing it again. Out wide and Messam. There must be something about this corner and Liam Messam. He just can't get in it. But ben Smith is playing a game of unmitigated brilliance at the moment. He just is tearing England to pieces from fullback. Barrett with the wide pass. This is Corey Jane looking stronger there on the wing. The offload in play is quite brilliant. But we're not going to see the killer pass from our replays. England win the line-out, but they are going to have to hang on for the next ten. That pass from Jay might well have been forward, but anyway, it didn't lead to the try, and Danny Kerr gets the ball out, and now Jane, with his fumble, will not get the chance to get it back in straight away. You think about it, Israel Dag, slight injury, and I think Steve Hansen looking on probably thought, I don't mind having a look at Ben Smith playing at full-back, because we can go Jane and Sevilla, and the back throw have worked really well, and Smith has been majestic. Metallic tax, McCall's got it. Starting to steer them all, starting to steer his team now towards a series win. Barrett going round, Jane again, Smith, kind of blade of grass that he's not stepped off it seems in this second half inside that England half, little shove from Farrell, that's a frustrated shove, England giving a penalty away here, the gap at the moment is five and it's potentially bridgeable, if it goes out to eight, big problems. Well, the Blacks have pressed the accelerator and England are finding it very hard because New Zealand is just outflanking them at the moment. But there's some individual brilliance and the running lines are so good. You know, it's the Smith boys, the Highlanders, it's a, a hell of a show at the moment. Aaron and Ben are just tearing them to pieces. And I think now, you know, well as Parling has gone, England have got to make a decision. They've got to get someone like... Courtney right. Laws into the game right. because the momentum has shifted entirely the the to the way of the home team. Billy Vanapola, another you man you think has here. to come on. Those are the two at the moment. Yeah. But the tide is definitely, definitely right now black. We've seen a, an outstanding 15 minutes of New Zealand rugby this half. And it was 10-3 just before half-time, and Cruden got that penalty. Smith and Sabir with tries in this second half. New Zealand's new kicker is Bowden Barrett. And he's picked out the upright. Caught by Tuilangi. Well played in the end. Mike Brown off that big left boot. It needed to be as about as big as it's ever been. It went a long way and Messam had to retreat. Smith. Ben Smith, that is, the fullback. And that's got too much on it. And Brown puts it down. That's good play from Tua Lange there. 
because he looked up and he thought, I'm, if I take the tackle here, we're right under our posts, and the All Blacks are screaming at us. The offload to Brown was a beauty. Good piece of skill. But let's reiterate it, 18-13, New Zealand are looking for the knockout blow. England have just got to stay on their feet here. And when do England unload the bench more than Hartley? White lock. There's Nonu. McCaw short that time to Woodcock. Parling still in there fighting. Here's Smith again to Messam. Seems to be playing as outside centre wing now. Liam Messam. England have got it at the breakdown. That's for it. Wood was there, leaves it to care. Now it's Farrell with a chip. 12 trees was very close to getting in front of his man there. Kick of Farrell, doesn't matter because New Zealand have it. It's Sarveer again. England keep it in to Lange. Just everything Julian Sarveer does is so good. He's down at the moment, he's coming back from injury, but his appetite for the tackle is huge. Pinning England in. I think it was out first time. Four and eight. Brilliant play there from Sevilla. As the substitutes come on, it's the two we expected. Courtney Laws. Laws, yep. Side line, fight. Billy Fight. Okay. Okay. So here, maybe an aggravated something, or is it a fresh knock? So Farrell was out. I mean, last year, Brian Habana was good, but this guy looks at the moment the best winger in the world. Poof, what a player. No Kieran Reid just yet. England's other chief tormentor in recent times. And an all-black penalty here. Remember how England started so well in this area of the game, the rolling more. New Zealand are getting everything going right now in the battle of the two captains, the two sevens there on the floor. McCaw and his team going forward. That was Owen Franks. Still advantage being played. Barrett. Rob Shaw can do very little there that time. Kaimo staying on his feet and they're driving him on. It's all New Zealand power now. And it could be about to get worse for England. Look, you made no attempt to roll away. You're blocking the ball. No. England lose. Their chief playmaker, fly half Owen Farrell, their kicker to the Simbit. It looks like it's now an eight-point margin and one man down for ten minutes. It is going to be the fight back of Chris Robshaw's career if England win this. New Zealand have ratcheted up the pace here. Just endless tide. They're hitting the breakdown with so much ferocity. They might not be physically the biggest men in the world up front, but the speed with which they're attacking it just lends so much dynamism to the play, and it's forcing the penalties at moment and it's also supplying Aaron Smith with the sort of quick ball that England got for 20 minutes or so but can't dream of now. Barrett for this all-important gap creator of a kick. And absolutely no problem from there. And on come, sorry, Kevin sorry, Mialam, who's come on to replace Dane Coles as the New Zealand hooker. 112 caps. <laughs> for just, I'm just saying 10 mil seems a long time ago, doesn't it? New Zealand really turned it around, and Mialamu, he has come on, and he'll be all angles and awkward as 12 trees. 
takes on the role of fly half for 10 minutes. And all turnovers last week as well, wasn't he, Neil? On a very important role that he played, charged down. Had one from Launchbury in the first half, now it's Courtney Laws. He gets those long arms out. Well, he'll add some injection to the England game. Tremendous season, and he'll be very keen to make his point here. Not forward off England. Going back, it's off a white down in the line out. No advantage called over there, even though New Zealand took on the kick. I suppose it was a tight spot. In the line to the out. Angle. We're going scrum. Yeah. Knocked on in the line out. Yeah. Dylan Hardy. So hoping against hope that it's an England throw. A little bit of showmanship. Twenty-one thirteen down, New Zealand in complete control of the game. England down a fly half. This England pack needs to find a real turbocharged scrum here. Something to shift the game. Maybe get a penalty, get a kick, take a minute, get three points. Something to make them start believing again. So England's big absentees are, of course, the front row. That could be a call out. It's called the Sierra, Dan Cole, Tony Youngs. Hey, every side gets injuries. You've got so many in one position or absences. Kieran Reid is a pretty big absentee for the home side, of course. That goes Mike Brown. Got a hand on it, got it back. Tom Wood well played. Care. 12 trees. The stand in standoff. Has he got the angle on it? Well, no, is the answer. He just hopes that it puts the brakes on, but of course it doesn't. By the way, the cheering is an ears on the pitch, not too far from Twelve Trees, actually, just having a look. Poor kick from Billy Twelve Trees. He's seen often by Stuart Lancaster as a, an alternative fly half. I personally think he's an inside centre and he is not a ten. And he, he didn't kick like a fly half there. England needed to pin New Zealand back and they've just given them possession, territory the lot. They have not kicked well enough, that's one thing, even in the first half, they didn't yeah, kick with enough precision, precision or accuracy. Miss Smith, for both of them, down to Ben. All New Zealand possession here now. Barrett crossfield to Elangi. This will test his positioning. In the end, the ball had too much on it. But Savier was breathing down his neck again. It's a win-win kick, though, isn't it, from Bowden Barrett? Stays in field, Sevilla is a menace, goes into touch. England are eight points behind, five metres from their line. Super play from the Hurricanes, ten. Show your numbers. Five. Pressure throw here for Hartley, and he goes the shorter ball. Gives Vinopola the call. So there, makes a mistake, make a note of it. But look at it from New Zealand again, and Ben Smith having a stunning game. Here's Conrad Smith, England being opened up all over the shot now. Not who's stepping, stepping, and scoring. The winning habit is refusing to go away. Test match all but done. Series all but done. 
We've talked about the brilliance of, Con of Ben Smith. Watch out for Conrad Smith. What a line. Out to in. And then the quality of the pass. The pass that last week when Carl Eastman made the break, he couldn't find the man. Barrett, Corey Jane, there's the inside line, the outside arc off the left hand, he finds his man. None who finds three steps, New Zealand find the way to the series victory. Brilliant try. Reality check for England here. Thank you. Wyatt Crockett. He's on the field for New Zealand and also Charlie Famuina. So both props changed. Here's Bowden Barrett. A slider from him. Woodcock, you never say with a prop, his work is done. Nature of the position, but certainly put in a shift tonight, as has that man. Criticised last week. Heavily criticised when you think what he's achieved where he was last year, but that is the nature of New Zealand and their public. But he's answered in the most emphatic way, and he's got the try to show for it now. New Zealand have three second half tries. Stop, seven. And Barrett, very accomplished at fly half. Yard. Can England come back, if not for the win, just to give themselves something to head to Hamilton with? Thank you. In test terms, Christchurch and the Crusaders, of course, coming up just around the neck. on Tuesday. On the it's a knock-on, but no advantage. England have a penalty for the high one. Just well, around the neck. This second half makes Tuesday's game all the more important because this tour has always been about two things, winning a series, not that one in the test nut match. A, for the immediate future, but B, for the World Cup. Flag is up. Yeah, he's in. And carry on there, Miles. On Tuesday, a lot of players who are the second wave of England will be trying to make their mark against the Crusaders, one of the great franchises of New Zealand Super Rugby, who will be very strong at the moment. And New Zealand, of course, would love a confident England team to arrive here, talking about a victory and leave with four defeats and no wins. A lot to play for. Hartley throws to his club colleague, Courtney Laws, the Northampton Saints. Care, 12 trees. Burrell, start of the game, those strong runs through the middle. Seen a long time ago now. Billy Vodopolo, it takes a few to stop him, but he was stopped. Yeah, you got it. Same can be said about that by Manu Tuilangi. Going back. Another England Grabbing penalty. Leg in the mall. That was a tackle in the mall. Mike Brown moves forward quickly. Grabbing a leg in the mall. And England look for another mall. They started the game driving New Zealand from line out at will, getting penalties at will. You'd say an hour ago, England in a position here to catch and drive and score a try. At the moment, though, New Zealand have actually looked to England's strength and they've eyeballed them and said, We're going to be stronger than you. Though England have had all their advantages taken away, they need to rediscover one. Owen Farrell back. Use it once. Leave it out. Trying to get it rolling. Care. Farrell. 12 trees, but the referee blows again. For the knock on. Crown on the far side had seen it. Just say Victor Vito's on the field as well, and he's wearing 20. Angelo Owens. The man with the eyes like a hawk. Lost forward, I didn't see it. Bell me out. Yeah. Too go. many little to see, little errors. Saw that in the first half, didn't we? With Karen Weber, eye off the ball, it's happened again. The little errors have added up. When England were in the ascendancy, 
They didn't take full advantage, and now that they're losing, they're just making too many and giving themselves no chance to get back into this test. Ashton too is ready himself for an international return. On the ground where he couldn't stop scoring at the World Cup. Three against Romania, two against Georgia here in 2011. Slightly different proposition. The world champions keeping this run going. But free kick to England. And what they have done in these last few minutes is establish some territorial ground. Now can off this. Get some points. That was Vunapola. This is Marla. Care. Farrell. It's going to have to be good here from 12 trees and two Ilegi. Two Ilegi. Takes on Salvia. Tries to barge him over, but Salvia can defend as well as attack. Here's Vunapola. Gives it to Robshaw and Wilson, who keeps on going. There's David Wilson. Shoots it out to Care. Mike Brown, it wasn't knocked on by Courtney Laws, just threw the hands and backwards. Vunapola again. Where's it going? Where's the precision in attack that New Zealand find in these situations? Robshaw pulls it back, Mirlama says, why can't I? It was out. Advantage England, though, and here's Mike Brown, and Mike Brown should finish this. Mike Brown! Got himself into a slightly awkward position there. Can you see a grounding? I think it's a try. Okay. But have a look, but yeah. I think it's not a try. No. Jerome Garces thinks it might first. be. George. There's a clear question yeah, mark hanging over it, though. To award this try. But that's a key question. Yes. Any reason not to? Well, he made up his mind to go for it. He better score this now. Aaron Smith defensively everywhere with Corey Jane. Brown is over the line, he's well over. That's a try. Isn't it? <laughs> well, it seemed as if it was going to be, but there is an arm of Jane wrapped around the ball. Aaron Smith on hand as well, Corey Jane wearing 14. I, I think it goes down early now and then yeah. it bounces up. That's a try. And now he's going to come up again and be off the ground. A little bit of the ball, just contact the ground there. We are zooming in. Any reason not to award it was the question. Going as slow as we can. Hand there, hits the floor. There. That's it. The one frame back before that. Yes, George. Yes, George. I I do feel that there's a hand between the the, the ball and the grounding. Yes. English players, all right. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'll take the message from the, from the English player on. So you say there's no reason why I can't award the try. Thank you. And it was all in the question from the referee and George Ayou, the television match official, possibly pointing that out to him. Yeah, definitely. A different phrase, and you might have come up with a different outcome there. So, Brown for England, just maybe a little glimmer of hope as Marla leaves. Well, a gesture of defiance as well. And care too. There's the conversion. The Harlequins boys exit. Good. 28-20. I 
I didn't think so. See the value of that penalty goal that took New Zealand out from 18 to 21. And Farrell, that made a lovely sound. Almost echoed off the roof. Well, whatever happens now in the next eight minutes, we're going to learn quite a bit about this England team. I think the answer is, yeah, they've got a lot of character, but they've taken a bit of a pounding in the last half hour or so. But I would expect them to keep going till the end and then move on to Christchurch and then Hamilton. It's been a superb second half for New Zealand. Mullen on for England, winning his fourth cap. The London Wasp prop. Mark on Nonu and Conrad Smith closing in on that. Gordon Darcy, Brian O'Driscoll centre record partnership. The play by Cordy Laws in his long arms again. Very useful. Ben Young's in his new scrum half. Parling to 12 trees, running into his own man. That man was Dylan Hartley. And England still battling, still fighting, but it's hard out there now. Yeah, the time, but they're trying to play their way out of their 22. Nothing wrong with that. Purely accidental there. Tofty does have a fairly regular tendency of stepping in field, and I think Hartley thought he was just fading out on the pass, and he does check, come, step back. And he just stepped straight back into the Northampton man. He stepped in the field to great effect in the first half. Not that time, just in the midriff of Dylan Hartley. Mm. When he did in the first half, in the end, the final pass, the pop wasn't quite right. And if you look at Billy Twelvetrees this game, that has been the story of his game. Promise unfulfilled. And if you had to pick out the key difference between the two sides at the moment still, it is that final pass, that precision inside the 22. When the chance is there, New Zealand take it, England... And, 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 and breathtaking brilliance behind the scrum. Surveyor, Nonu, Ben Smith, we don't have players like that at the moment. Here's Nonu to uh, Bone Barrett. Oh, he's motoring there. Oh, look at him go. Tackled by Tuilangi. New Zealand irked by the Mike Brown score. Looks to re-establish dominance. Does Captain Richie McCall and his team. Famoina. Aaron Smith. Barrett. who have got them going again. Nonu, good offload. Victor Vito. And Kaino, who is going to get... A 50th cap day to celebrate. Flag is up from Nigel Owens. Just threats everywhere. Barrett so quick as well. New Zealand get quick ball, they come hard and fast. They've done all this second half. England on the back foot again. And it's loose for McCaw. Just think how the game started for him, with Yard knocking him aside, and England establish an early lead, long since gone. McCaw's men about to rub it in, if they can. England still needing two scores to keep the series alive. Not to say next week in Hamilton will not be a fascinating test match, of course it will be. But it's going 2-0 New Zealand and McCall wants to say that in the most emphatic way possible. And he is held up, says Jakob Pelper. Hanson and company, they would like one more score, wouldn't they? 28-20 sends England up to Christchurch saying, hey, it's only an eight-point margin. New Zealand want to finish this second half with a definitive score. They have been brilliant. Parley, he started the game so well, didn't he? McCaw, he started it so poorly, but it's all turned around now. McCaw drives for the line. That's a very brave defend in there. Matt Mullen, I think, involved in holding the all-black captain up.
try and lean into the gap. New Zealand enjoying this moment. Coach! Metallic off to Pilotu on. TJ Perinara putting into the scrub now as well. Just a slip. And again. Number 19, Patrick Tuipilotu, his first cap. Move off here. Only one not on last week. Okay. A nice moment okay. to come on for the young man. Let's go. Talking of age, New Zealand with nine players in their 23 who are 30 plus. England, just the one player in their 23. Jeff Tarling, just 30. So there is a difference in experience. The one for the oldies today. And the oldies still have an awful lot of firepower and some young talent alongside too. Immense tap. Now can New Zealand provide the perfect finish for them? No, they can't. England showing great grit and determination at that scrum. Rob Shaw will like that. That's character. And that's Farrell, but that's not touch. Ben Smith, a shining light in this second half from fullback. Perinara and Samir, another bright light. As New Zealand came right back in England, and how? Tarling and Vunapola hold up their man. Five points the difference last week. At the moment, eight points the difference. Is that a fair reflection between the two sides, Stuart, as England put into this scrum? I, I think on this second half, New Zealand are uh, probably better than the scoreboard reflects. You know, people talk about... We'll hear coaches talk about accuracy and execution. They're euphemisms for excellence. And what we've seen is you see shots of people like Nonu and, and, and the Smiths and Surveyor is excellence. The reason they put the chances away, the reason they run the right lines, are because they're outstanding rugby players and they have a culture that goes back a long way. By the time Hansen gets hold of them, these guys are ready to play test match rugby. England still has a way to go. Interesting alignment here. Everyone's straight behind the scrum. And what a strong scrum as well. Billy Bonapola defines from England at the end. Farrell, 12 trees, Brown slips. But it was a penalty coming, so even though it came off an England boot into New Zealand hands. Didn't matter. I, I, I don't know whether New Zealand have just eased off a bit when they got that big lead, but England have scrummed yes. extremely yes. well. And we said at 72, the next eight minutes or so are going to tell you about character. They have shown character. Somehow in the next week, what they've got to find is an extra bit of class. Or they've got to find a game plan so strong up front that they just deprive these brilliant black backs of the ball. And that's easier said than done. But the second half, it's just been a joy to watch New Zealand's backs. Final line out, final chance. We know the match from an England point of view is lost, the series is lost. But can they head to Hamilton just that little bit closer? They have beaten New Zealand on England soil in recent times, still. And to add to those two previous victories in this country, Ooh, that's not good. Brown might want to get this off in a funny sort of way, although that's a little bit white flaggish. Ben Youngs. And Tom Ward has not stopped going. See his teeth gritted there as he went to the floor. That's exactly what he's done today. He's gritted those teeth in all that he's done. And Yard. Troy Trees looks for the money ball. That's a good one, though. And it goes wide again to Tuilagi. 
And then it goes even wider to Mike Brown. And then it's inside, and Chris Ashton's going to score. And England do get that little bit closer and do have that score to take to Hamilton. And that, at the very end there, the way they seize the chance, the kind of rugby England wanted their host to experience, instead of being on the other end of. Chance was there, and they took it. Turalangi drew two men there as if he was in New Zealand. That was really good. But the other bloke who's made a big difference and, and led to England getting to front foot was Billy Vunipola, who was strong. Great finish for England, but New Zealand deserved the win. So there it is. New Zealand have the series. They were only going to get better, and so it proved. And once again, the All Blacks have proved what New Zealand rugby is all about. Above all, it's about winning ideas in abundance and skills to go with them in that second half. McCaw's men, very impressive in the second period and deserve winners of the game and the series too. Well, disappointment for England, but congratulations once again to the All Blacks. All that hope pre-game fades away. It's an all-too-familiar story.